My cup's overflowing. 
Charlotte, and I want to welcome you in officially to our morning service. I am so excited to be here. Um, oh my goodness. Hey, if you haven't yet, do me a favor and share this message. Start a watch party. Uh, send it to somebody. I'm telling you, we need to share the gospel. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Let's get right into the word this morning. We have been in a series titled Rebuild. Rebuild. This is week three, y'all. We've already made it to re week three. And um, remember what pastor told you guys right in the beginning. Rebuild means, oh my God, it means to build something. To build something again after, listen to this, after it has been damaged or destroyed. There's been some things over this past year in 2020 where we lost some stuff. Things just didn't work out right. You, you know what's been happening in your lives. We see what's been happening in the world. And it's time for us as the body to come back together and to re build. Y'all ready to rebuild? Anybody ready to rebuild? All righty. Let's go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time right now. I ask Lord God right now that you would just remove me. Allow your Holy Spirit to flow through me, Lord God. Let this word penetrate the heart of the hearers this morning, Lord God. Let us come closer to you. Let us want more of you than we want anything in this earth. So we thank you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Come on, somebody say amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. So if you remember, week one, we came right at the gate, and we're using the word rebuild as an acrostic. So every letter represents something else. And we started out with the letter R. It meant to remember. What are we supposed to remember? We are supposed to remember God's promises. And what did he say? What did he promise us? Because there's so many promises in the Bible. He promised that he would be there with us. He promised that he would protect us, that he would strengthen us, that he would answer us, that he would provide for us, that he would give us peace. And most importantly, that he will continue to love us no matter what. He loves us. And then in week two, last week, pastor did an amazing job because he told us that we needed to engage. We needed to engage in a relationship with God. And how do we do that? He gave us a few points. He told us we need to engage our faith. We had to engage in prayer. We had to engage in his word daily. Hear me, daily we have to engage his word. We had to engage in fellowship. How do we fellowship through COVID? Hey, there's something called Zoom. There's FaceTime. We all can engage. We have to be careful, wear our masks, um, have coffee, sit six feet apart. Whatever you have to do, do not forsake the fellowship. Amen. We still need each other. God created us for a relationship. So therefore, we have to have fellowship. And then he said that we needed to engage his voice. We have to uh, slow down. We have to be quiet in order to hear his voice. So this morning, we're going to get to the letter B. And here we go. B stands for believe. Come on, everybody say it with me. Say, I believe. I believe. Amen. Amen. Um, we have to believe. What does believe truly mean? What, what does it mean? Because we say that we're believers, right? Believe means this, to accept something as true, genuine, honest, or real, except the word of evidence. We have to believe. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your notepads because I'm going to give you uh, a sermon full of scripture. Today, we're going to dig into the word. Is that okay with you guys? All right, just type amen. Say it's okay with me, first, uh, first lady. There are people who think it doesn't matter what they believe. As, as long as they believe in something, you know, I'm not sure what I believe in, I, but I, I believe in, you know, the higher power. I believe there's something out there, whatever you may believe. But here's the thing. In reality, what we believe affects all areas of our life. Okay, let me say it like this. Uh, we are guided by what we accept as truth. Uh, that, that's it. We are guided by what we accept as truth. If we accept lies <laughs> as truth, 
we will end up living a lie. Come on, let, let's be real. What we believe about God, what we believe about Jesus, what we believe about the Holy Spirit, what we believe about the Word of God affects how we talk. It affects how we walk. Um, it affects how we treat each other. It affects how we use the gifts that God has given us, our time, our talent, and our treasure, um, how we treat each other how we raise our children, how we are in relationship with one another, and how we make our daily decisions and choices. So, beloved, we call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves believers, which in my opinion nowadays um, has somewhat been watered down. Um, okay, let me be honest. Uh, People are talking the talk, but they're not walking it. Uh, people are hearers of the word, but are they truly doers? Um, how can you say that, First Lady? Uh, just turn on the news. I mean, uh, there, there's so much happening. The insurrection on the Capitol, uh, some are doing it in the name of Jesus. I don't know how you can hate anybody in the name of Jesus. I don't know how any of this things are happening. How can we just say, I'm a believer or I'm a Christian and then treat other people the way I would treat my enemies? How can I hate someone but yet say, I am a Christian? I don't understand. My assignment, let me get back to my assignment. My assignment this morning is this, to show you the importance of believing the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. What does God say? but also to remind some of you and to teach others what we must believe is the truth as true Christ followers. Which means if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to be intimate with him. We need to know who he is. We need to ask ourselves the questions, what would Jesus do? right? It's not just a cute little saying. It's not the armband we wear, the WWJD. It's, it's not about that. We need to know what did he really say? What did he say to us? So this morning, the first thing that we must do, okay, let me say it like this. The first thing I need to do. So I want you to personalize this message today. I want you to say the first thing I, come on, just say it with me. The first thing I need to do is believe that Jesus is my Savior. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I have to believe that Jesus is my Savior. Without a shadow of a doubt, believe that God saved you. If you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you have to believe that no matter what, that you are saved. Okay, I'm going to go right into the word of God with you this morning. And you should know this scripture. If you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ, this, if you don't know, know no other scripture, this is the one that you need to know. John 3, 16. I bet you your kids can probably recite it. For this is how God loved the world. Uh, 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 he loved the world. It didn't say Christian. He gave his one and only son that everyone who believes... Okay, there it is. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Oh my goodness. John 3, 16. God loved you so much. He loved the world. Okay, what, that, what does that mean? That means he loved you before you became a Christian. He loved you. He loves you in sin. He loves you. When we believe by faith, that Jesus alone is our sin bearer. He bore the sins on our behalf. The divine judgment is removed. Thank you, Jesus. And eternal life is freely given. Oh my God, I am walking in complete freedom. Why can I say I walk in freedom? Because I am saved. Okay, go with me to Romans 10 and 10. It says this, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Oh my God, the only thing, the only thing that saved us from sin is believing that Jesus died for our sins. When we believe, we receive God's righteousness. 
We are a new creation in Christ. And, 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 and look at that word, declaring your faith, openly declaring your faith. You can't walk around talking about, well, you know, it's just me and God. And, you know, I'm just not that person that tells people about Jesus. It's just my personal relationship. Yes, we should have a personal relationship. But part of that is telling everybody else, why keep them to yourself? Amen. You need to spread the gospel. Okay, okay, so I need to know that Jesus saved me. What else do I need to know? Next, I must believe that God chose me. Oh, my goodness. You have to believe by faith that he chose you. Who? You. You that are watching. Everyone that's watching. Everyone that's here this morning. God chose you. He chose you. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Ephesians 1 and 4. Uh, okay, do you see it? Do you see it? It says, even before he made the world. Oh my God, God thought of you before creation. He thought of you before the fall. He fought, thought of you before Adam. He thought of you before the oceans formed. He thought of you before the light came. He thought of you. God chose you. Therefore, we are recipients of his blessing. We can't ask God for blessings. Bless me, Lord. Come on, Lord. I need you. Bless, bless me, Lord. If we don't believe that he chose us in the first place, that doesn't make any sense. No matter how we may feel, about ourselves because the truth is many of us sometimes have walked in unworthiness we just don't think we're worthy we don't think that we're good enough we don't think we've made mistakes in the past so now I'm like well God probably doesn't love me he doesn't think that I'm worthy he doesn't think he can't choose me because of what I've done but we must believe that he deems of uh, worthy no matter what okay all righty you don't believe me go to Rome uh, Romans uh, chapter 5 verses 6 and 8 when we were utterly helpless. Come on. How many times have you felt helpless? I know in 2020, I have felt helpless. There were some people that I knew that got sick. There were some people that passed away. I felt helpless. Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Yes, you. Yes, me. Uh, verse eight, but God, oh my goodness, God, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. So you may be in the middle of your sin right now. I'm here to tell you God still loves you. Now there's something that you need to do and that is called repentance, but I'm here to tell you he still loves you. While we were helpless and sinning, he loved us. That is what we call unconditional love. See, 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 I, I know my husband loves me and I know he loves me unconditionally, but there is a limit, amen? There, I could hurt him, I could do a whole bunch of stuff and his love may end, but here's what I'm here to tell you. God's love for me will never end. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if I walk backwards. It doesn't matter if I get lost. He will always love me. He knew what I would do. He knew what I did, but yet he still loves me. I mean, that right here is a, is, is, is a chance for you to praise him. If you're in your living room right now, wherever you are, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, you need to praise him right now that he loved you despite of your sin. Amen? Wow, wow, wow. Jesus said it in John 15 and 16. He says, you did not choose me. I chose you. It was nothing you did. It was all about him. But, but. Some of you may be asking the way that I used to ask, but why would God choose me? Why would God choose a sinner like me? Why? I mean, I didn't grow up in the right family. I didn't have the right conditions to be successful. Why would he cho choose me? What good thing have I done that makes me worthy to be chosen? What good deeds have I done? Um, I'm not that good. Why would he choose me? If that is your question today, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm sorry to tell you this. Um, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about what you did or didn't do. It's not about that at all. It is about how good God is. 
It is about him. He chose you because he loves you. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tells us this, uh, that salvation is a gift from God. What, what, what do I mean? If it's a gift, you don't deserve it. I mean, how many times, do you, you know, I give my children gifts sometimes when they do a good thing, but sometimes I just give them gifts because I love them. Sometimes they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything for me. They didn't clean their room, which if you're watching, go clean your room. I'm just saying that I just give them something because they are my children. They, I love them. It is not a reward for being good. And why do you think he has to tell us that? Why do you think that the word has to tell us that it's not about us? Because we like to brag. Come on, let's be real. We like to boast. We like to, be, okay, how many times have you come home and you just, you made sure that you saw a homeless person and you gave him $10 and you got to tell all your friends about it. You know, today I just want to give you a testimony. I just want to tell you the good things that I have done. Amen. Uh, so we, th that's just our nature. We like to let people know all of the great things we are doing, even though the word says, don't let your left or your right. Hand. Okay. 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 Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to go there. He knows that we like to brag. We are sinners. We're sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. I'm telling you, Romans 3 and 20, we fallen short each and every day. It is clear. It is clear that in spite of our best intentions, even our holier-than-thou attitude, you know, we, we think we know it all. We, we, we think that I got this God thing down. I mean, I read my Bible every day. I do a devotional. I come to Bible study. I listen to my pastor on Sunday. I listen to 15 other pastors throughout the week. I mean, I got this thing down, right? And we think we are good. But Somebody say, thank you for his grace and mercy. <laughs> so just say, thank you for your grace and mercy. Because in our ignorance, when we think we know it all, God is like, you don't know nothing. Amen. So thank you. Thank okay. All right. I got to go. What do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? I have to believe that he hears me. I have to believe that he hears my prayers. I have to believe that he hears me. We have gone through probably one of the hardest years of our lives, 2020, and it's just not my bad year. It was your bad year, your bad year. It was your bad year, amen? It was just the country's bad year. It is the world's bad year. With coronavirus, it was a bad year. And now that we're in 2021, we were hoping it was going to get better, but right now it doesn't look that good, amen? I mean, all you have to do is turn on the television. Uh, we're still in the pandemic. The numbers are still going up. People are still getting getting sick. Hospitals are still over, uh, just overcrowded. There are no beds. It doesn't seem to be letting up. Uh, there's civil unrest. There's fighting in the streets. Uh, D.C., the way it looks right now, it looks like a war zone. It looks like Iraq. Actually, had a friend of ours who, was, who lives in D.C. driving through was like, I cannot believe it looks like this. Barricades everywhere. everywhere. There are police officers with guns drawn. It's crazy. It doesn't look like it's getting any better. Racism, the atmosphere in our country, the loss of life, the pain, the financial issues, everything, the burdens of life. 2021, I, 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 and, and I know you've been praying because we've been praying. We've been praying as a church. I know you're crying out to God. I know that you are praying for your family members. You're praying for your children. We are praying for the teachers. We are praying for the police officers. We are praying, we are praying, we are praying. And I believe maybe part of this all happening is because God needs us to get on our knees. Amen. We have been praying. But I'm here to tell you, that God is hearing your prayers. Even though it doesn't seem like the prayers are being answered, even though people are still getting sick, he hears your prayers. Look at Mark. This is what Mark and Matthew have to say in the gospel. Here's Mark. Mark in chapter 11, he says this in verse 23, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really, you have to do what? But you must really believe it. It will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe, okay, if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Okay, all right, let me give you Matthew. Here's what Matthew says. It's simple. He says it just like this. If you believe, 
you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Okay, let me quantify that real quick. Let me just, let me just back that up because some of y'all be like, oh, dear God, please let, that, uh, please let the Tesla be right in my front yard. No, that's not going to happen. It needs to be in the will of God. Amen. It has to be part of his will. We can't be praying for somebody else's husband. Amen. Nope, can't do that. Uh, somebody just said, ouch. Hallelujah. We can't do that. It has to be in the will of God. Through faith in Jesus we have access to his divine power. It's like, okay, let me give you an example. Um, it's like your electric company. Uh, some of you have Novec. Uh, some of you have Pepco. We have all these electric companies, right? And you pay your bill. When you pay your bill, you have access to electricity. Uh, you have lights, right? Uh, but here's the thing. You go home and you walk in the door and it's dark. Now, I know I paid my bill. Now, I know I, what's going on here. There is no light. Um, flip the switch. <laughs> In order for you to have electricity, you have to do something. You have to flip the switch. It's the same way with God. Yes, yes, I, you have to actively believe. Believe right here is an action word. I can't just believe and think it. I actually have to do something and walk in faith. Amen. Somebody say it is required. Y'all know what I'm about to say. Hashtag do the work. You have to do the work. I can keep paying that electric company, but if I never flip the switch, I will always be in the dark. Amen. So, okay. All right. All right. All right. Next. What do I have to do next? Next. I must number four. Here it is. Next. I must believe God gave me a purpose. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> that is the most asked question that I get. First lady. But here's the question that I get. First lady, how do I find my purpose? I don't know what my purpose is. I mean, I've been coming to church for five years. I still don't know what my purpose is. Okay, and, and, and what I found, what I found, if this is you, I'm not beating you up, I'm picking you up, amen? What I have found, what people are really trying to ask, the question that they need to know, the question that they really want the answer to, is not about what their purpose is, it is about what is my assignment? What am I supposed to be doing in the body of Christ right now? How do I use what God has given me in order to lift up his name? How do I serve God? That's really what you want to know. What do I do and how do I serve them. Beloved, guess what? The purpose you seek, the purpose that God has placed inside of you, it's in the Bible. It's in there. You just have to look for it. It's in there. We all, okay, we all have the same purpose. Wait, what? We all have the same purpose? I don't believe you, first lady, because I see people doing different things. We all have the same purpose. Stay with me. Let's look at some scripture. Now, uh, get ready. Write these down because I'm, I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures, okay? First one, it is Ephesians 2 and 10. It says this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things. Okay, let me say it again. So we... You can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Remember what I said before the uh, beginning of the earth. He already knew you were going to be here. He planned for you long time ago to do the good things. What are the good things? I don't know. You're going to have to get in the Bible yourself and look at what are the good things. Okay. Uh, remember, we're not saved because of the good things. We are saved so we can do the work and do the good things. Uh, 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 doing good is part of his purpose. Okay, all righty. Matthew 28, you should know this one. Matthew 28, uh, it's the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Verse 20, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. What are the commands? Back again, you got to go in the Bible to find out what those commands are. So, I am to go, I have to do good works, right? I have to do good things, good deeds. I have to go, that's action. I have to do something and I have to make disciples. That means I have to talk about my faith. I have to preach the gospel. Oh yeah, you don't have to be a preacher, teacher, whatever, 
to preach the gospel. When you tell people about Jesus, you are preaching in the, the gospel. You ought to teach those that don't. That means your children. That means your family members. That means those that don't know who he is. You have to teach the word of God. Okay. Our purpose is action. When we aren't doing anything for God, you are out of purpose. Okay, if you, if the only thing that you are doing is watching Sunday service, uh, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing? Am I sharing it? Am I telling other people about it? Am I talking about it from Monday through Saturday? What am I doing? I have to do something. Our purpose, our purpose. All right, John 13, go with me to John 13. So now I am giving you a new command. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciple. Okay, I'm just going to say this. How can you say I hate you and consider yourself a Christian? What does this say? 35, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are a disciple. Don't tell me you're going to come up against somebody. Don't tell me you're going to oppress somebody. Don't tell me, but then say, well, but I'm a Christian. That's not how that works. We ought to love each other. Part of your purpose is to love people. And guess what? Let me say this. You got to love the unlovable. Oh my God. Those people that get on your nerves, those people that talked about you, those people that stabbed you in the back. Yep. Even those, even your enemies. That's why you have to read the word of God. It says, pray for your enemies. The same God that put uh, President Trump in office is the same God who now put Biden in office. I'm sorry. It's not that God is confused all of a sudden. It doesn't matter who is in office. God is in control. Amen. God is in control. And our job is to pray for each person. We prayed for Trump. Now we're going to pray for Biden. I'm going to continue to pray for all. Amen. Amen. That is what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to try to kill each other over it because that's not showing love. That is not showing love. Okay, go with me to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. Ooh, thank you, God, for reminding me. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. As a result, because of that, Okay, as a result, because I am chosen, because I'm a royal priest, because I'm a holy nation, because I belong to him, you can show others the goodness of God. Oh, my God. If he can cho choose me, guess what? He chose you and you and you and you. He chose those people that are at the Capitol. He chose all of them. He chose us. He created us in his image for he called you out of the darkness and into the wonderful light. Thank you, Jesus. There are these are only a few scriptures that I wanted to share with you. There are plenty of them in there. You got to dig in and you find them for yourself because he chose you. Me, we must show others his goodness and his love. That is our job. That is our calling. Along with our new identity in him, we have to live a new lifestyle. We should look different than the world. We should be different than everybody else. People should see the light of Jesus on you. When you walk into the room, they should say, whoa, what was that? Oh, God, all of a sudden, I mean, we were, uh, everything was all crazy. You walk in and you just bring peace. Amen. Say, here comes peace. Amen. Amen. We are to be ambassadors by sharing the message. That's how we serve God. That's how we walk in our, uh, in our uh, purpose. We ought to be the light. Why do you think we call ourselves light of life? Amen. Because we are the light. When people see us, they see the light of Jesus. Once you understand what your purpose is, once you know what that purpose is, then you can figure out, well, what is my assignment? How do I walk this thing out? Okay, let me give you an example. Me, for instance, I know what my purpose is. I know how to love to people. I'm supposed to love people. I'm supposed to do good works. I'm supposed to do all of these things. How do I do that? My assignment is women. It's just what I know that God gave me. My assignment is to uh, equip, to encourage, to help women come out of their stuck in their dry places. So I'm using my gift to still love them even when they're unlovable. Amen. That is my assignment. What about you? You have to ask yourself, what am I good at? 
what can I do? Okay, so you can sing. Well, use your voice to praise God. While they're watching you, thank you, praise team, while they're watching you sing, you are spreading the gospel through your song. Okay, okay, y'all didn't know this, but we had technology problems up until five minutes until, uh, you may have noticed a little something, something, but we had some technology problems this morning. But guess what? Let me tell you about it. Here, if you are good with technology, then you will make sure that you are the person that's going to bring the gospel out. That's why we have a Gabby. That's why we have a Brad. That's why we have a TC. Uh, that's why we have a Pierce. Because their gifting is in technology. And while the rest of us are going crazy trying to figure out how to make it work, they use their gift to bring the gospel, to bring you the gospel. Okay, so you're good with kids. Why are you not working with Children's Church? Amen. Okay, let me tell you. Oh, well, you know, I don't really have a gift. All I know is how to cook. Come here, Danielle. Come here, Chef Carissa. Guess what? Your gift right now is to feed those that don't have anything. Yes, it is your business, but guess what? You can share the gospel while you're cooking. You may be uh, cooking and you're praying at the same time. The food that they will receive, they will get a little bit of love of Jesus. Amen? Okay, okay. I don't, I, 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 I like to work out. I, I, that, that's, I feel like that's my only gift. Well, you know what? Do it for the gospel. That's what pastor does. When he works out, he teaches people not just about how to work out and how to build a strong body. He is telling you about how God is calling us to take care of our body. Amen. He encourages you between your mind, your physical and your spiritual. So whatever that is. Oh, oh okay. Well, you know, I just know how to fix things. Okay. Come here, Deacon Fred. <laughs> he just know he's a handyman of all trades. Amen. But he goes to different people's houses and he helps them. That is spreading the gospel because while he's there, he's going to say, hey, do you know who Jesus is? Come on. So no more excuses. Don't ask me again. Okay, you can still ask me what's my purpose, but I'm going to tell you. Amen. So finally, I got to go. I got to go. Finally, here is our fifth point. Finally, if I'm going to rebuild that which was destroyed, if I'm going to rebuild, I have to ask God for help even in my unbelief. <laughs> Ask for help even in my unbelief. Wait, 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 what? Okay, First Lady, I believe. I believe. I mean, I believe all of these things. Do you? Do you always? Do you always believe? Here's the thing. The reality is sometimes there's doubt. Uh, sometimes we live in unbelief, even when we don't realize that we do. There have been times when our prayers haven't been answered. We could have been praying for a year, praying for five years, praying. Some of y'all get mad if y'all been praying for a week and it doesn't come true. But I'm just saying there are some of us who've been praying for the same prayer for almost 10 years and it hasn't happened yet. And I could get to a point where I feel like, well, maybe he doesn't hear me. Maybe it's not in the will of God. Now, I do know it's in the will of God, but still, just because he doesn't he hasn't answered yet doesn't mean that I need to go there but I'm human and humans as in humans sometimes we walk in doubt when we get that bad report from the doctor we can walk in unbelief when when life happens um, and we and, and and we stop and we get stuck when we go backwards and instead of forward we can end up in unbelief we can end up in unbelief um, when we stop walking in our calling when we stop walking in those things that he's called us to do, we can walk in unbelief. Even as believers, even as Christians, there are times when we walk in unbelief. There's a story in the gospel. There's a story in Mark 9. When you get a chance, read it. It's verses 14 through, um, verses 14 through 19, I believe. And it says this. So... Jesus is coming up, uh, he had just finished preaching, and he's walking towards a crowd of people. There, are, His disciples are there, uh, there are some of the Pharisees are there, there are some regular people there, and they're arguing. And he walks up and he's like, what's going on here? Why are y'all arguing? And this man speaks up, a father, he speaks up and he was like, Jesus, I'm paraphrasing here y'all, okay. <laughs> he's like, Jesus, my son 
is demon possessed. My son, um, he just, he's been like this since childhood. Uh, the demon will throw him on the floor. He will foam at the mouth. Um, he will sometimes fall into water. He will fall into fire. It just, this demon just takes him over. And I heard that you were nearby. So I brought him to your disciples and I asked them to cast out the demon out of my son. And they couldn't do it. Now, the disciples at that point have been able to cast out demons, but this time it didn't work. It didn't work. And, and, and this is where I feel like some, Jesus was getting a little perturbed because he was like, oh, my God, you guys don't believe nothing. I mean, y'all in y'all unbelief, what is happening here? And, and, and Jesus kind of is like, what is happening? So the father, the father, the father, um, w w when Jesus gets near the boy, here's what happens because the demon inside of the boy recognizes Jesus and he throws the little boy I don't know if he's little or not I don't I don't know it says since childhood so we don't know how old this uh the, the boy is or if he's a man at this point we don't know but it throws him into uh this convulsion he's foaming at the mouth the demon is like freaking out inside this man or this boy and here's what happens verse 22 this is what the father says he says the spirit often throws him into the fire and into the water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. He says this to Jesus, right? And I believe right here, because verse 23, before you get there, verse 23, I believe this is where Jesus catches an attitude. I don't know. I mean, you know, Jesus is loving and all of this stuff. But here's what Jesus says. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, player? Okay, I, I added that. He didn't say that. What do you mean, if I can? Like, if. Like, I'm Jesus. Like, are you asking me, Jesus, can you do if? Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. Anything is possible if a person believes. So here's what the father does, and here's what we ought to do. Here's what the father does. He says this in verse 24. The father instantly, he didn't wait for it. He didn't act, think about it. He didn't do any of that. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Oh, my God, beloved, beloved. I'm telling you today, I promise you, I'm telling you today, believing is like faith. They kind of go hand in hand. Faith, there are levels to it. We go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Um, it is our life. We have to persevere. We have to keep going. It's ever evolving. Our belief system is ever evolving and it gets stronger as we read the word. It gets stronger when we pray. It gets stronger when we have an intimacy with God. It gets stronger. Having a time of unbelief makes us human. It doesn't make us not be a Christian anymore. It just means that we're human. But you can't get stuck in your unbelief. You cannot get stuck in your unbelief. Amen? You must ask God the way the father asked him, help me in my unbelief. If you are going through a situation right now and you're feeling dry, you're feeling like you're in the wilderness, you feel like nothing is working and you're just like, I just can't get it. I, I'm reading scripture and it doesn't resonate. I'm praying and I feel nothing. I'm in my quiet time and I feel absolutely nothing. Where is God? I don't feel him. I don't feel him. Here's what I want you to know. He's right there, but you got to engage him. You got to ask him, help me in my unbelief. So if you're serious about rebuilding, if you're serious about it, you must believe. You must believe that Jesus is your savior. You must believe that he chose you in the first place. You have to believe that he hears your prayers. Even when the only thing out of your mouth is Jesus' help. He hears utterances. He hears through your tears. He hears when we're crying. He hears everything. He hears. You have to believe that he gave you a purpose. 
no more playtime. This is 2021. It feels like the end of times. So I'm here to tell you, this is the time for you to repent, amen? For you to walk away from all of that dumb stuff and to acknowledge him and make him your Lord and Savior. It's time. We don't have any more time to sit back and figure out and wait for it to happen. We have to walk with him. And if you feel like you're walking in some unbelief, ask for help. The more we remember what he has done for us in the first place, the more we engage and the more we believe, we can rebuild. So here's my question to you today. If you are listening under the sound of my voice, to everyone that is in here, you watching at home, do you want to believe? Do you want to believe that what he has said to you is true? If I'm talking to you and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. Give your life to Jesus today. It's simple. Yes, even right now while we are seeing each other virtually, you can still text. <laughs> text to be saved. Text your name, the word salvation to 571-926-3185. I promise you, we're going to call you and we're going to pray with you. Because you may just believe a little bit, but that's okay. It, it's okay. It's totally okay. You can text right now. Are you ready to walk in what you believe? Are you ready to walk in what you believe? If you've already accepted him, but you just haven't been walking with him, and you've just been on the sidelines, you know that he's given you something, you know you have an assignment, but you think you don't know enough, you think you're not studying enough, you think you don't know the word of God enough, and you're at the sidelines, or you've been walking backwards and you're just not sure, reconnect with him, rededicate today. You can do the same thing. Text your name and just say, I'm rededicating my life to him because at this point in my life, I'm just ready to do the assignment that he has called me to. Amen? So why don't you do this right now in your living rooms, in your kitchens, wherever you are right now, even if you're driving in your car right now, go ahead and pull over. <laughs> you shouldn't be watching in your car anyway unless you're parked. Maybe you're just listening. That's okay. Why don't you just say this prayer with me real quick? I know we don't always do that. But why don't you just close your eyes and ask God right now, do I believe? Help me with my unbelief. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I know that I have fallen short. But Father God, right now, publicly to you, I say, I believe by faith that you are the son who died on the cross and that you died for me and that you took away my sins, that you were buried in a borrowed tomb and that on the third day you rose with all power in your hand and that now you intercede on the right side of the Father that now you intercede on the right side of the Father for me, for me. I believe by faith that when I confess out of my mouth and believe in my heart that you are my Savior, I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you said this prayer today, hallelujah. If you said that prayer today, you are saved. So if you said that prayer, I want you to text us your name and just let us know, I said the prayer of salvation today. I rededicated today. Amen. 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 Come on. Thank you, Father, for this word. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. What a powerful word. God bless you. God be the glory.
listen, if that message has blessed someone out there watching, I know it blessed us in this crowded room, not so crowded social distance room this morning. Would you just do me a favor? Would you just help me bless the woman of God right now? Father, thank you for what she's given out, Lord. God, thank you for using your, your servant today. Thank you for using your servant today, Father. God, we come against the spirit of backlash right now. God, let no weapon formed against her prosper. Keep her in perfect peace. And God, let someone get healed, set free, saved, or delivered yes. just because of this word that Hallelujah. you birthed into her mouth. Hallelujah. It is in Jesus, name. Jesus name. Thank in you, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody type amen real amen. quick. Amen. Come on, let's do it. If you're a benediction, is there any more announcements? Okay, we got a church-wide prayer and fasting. We're still going into the 24th. Don't forget, I know you're hungry, but that's when you dig in deeper. Dig in deeper and ask God to help you here. And don't forget, ladies, don't forget, ladies, where the ladies at? Over 100 women have signed up and taken that Bible study every Wednesday night on our Zoom. So make sure, this is Lady Charlotte, I have the change Bible study. Make sure that is tomorrow at 7, Monday, to Monday at 7.
Monday at 7, 7 p.m. Make sure you get ready for that. Amen. Amen. And then our Pathway to Purpose classes. What is Pathway to, Pathway to Purpose? This is people who have joined our church. Every week somebody has joined our church this month. So we want to make sure that this we get, get you involved in what we're doing. That's our Pathway to Purpose. That's going to be Saturday the 23rd as well as the the 30th, and then I think we have some Tuesdays at the 26th and also Wednesday the 27th. It's only about an hour and a half, so make sure you register for that. Let us know. Shoot us a text at 571-926-3185 if you are a new member. Amen? 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 All right. Come on. Let's get ready to give the benediction. Wise and eternal God in heaven. Father, we thank you for the word that went forth today. God bless it. Let somebody get healed, set free, saved, and delivered. God place angels around us for safe travels and mercy as we log off and leave this place. For it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody shout. Yeah!